We all know that football is a really, really emotional game. It makes people angry, it makes people sad, it makes people cry, it makes people deliriously happy. Um, you get every emotion under the sun when it comes to football. I don't honestly believe that there's any other sport out there that really brings that range of emotions um, to so many um, fans um, week in and week out. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's lots of emotion around other sports. I'm not into any, but um, football is such an iconic game and it's so big um, that I don't think that there's anything that, that comes close to it. So that being said, I always try <laughs> to keep my emotion out of um, videos that I do or comments that I make. It's not easy. Um, to be honest, because obviously um, I'm an emotional guy as well. I get I get the ump the same as the next person, and uh, get angry the same as the next person, and so on. So with the defeat yesterday to Brighton, I decided I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to keep my head down, let me digest the result, and. Um, watch the game again um, and try to watch it without making any preconceived ideas about what I'm going to see. Yeah, okay, I know the result, I know we lost, I know it wasn't a great game, but at the end of the day I wanted to watch and see if my initial feelings were were true, you know, if, if, if it actually was as bad as I felt it was, if I actually... Um, felt the players weren't trying or, um, or were really that bad. Um, so, my, so ultimately, this is going to be quite controversial, but I honestly don't think that the players are not behind the coach. I, there are players that are severely out of form. There are players who are really playing without any confidence whatsoever. And I think that is um, quite a lot of them, to be fair. But when I look at... If you, if you look at yesterday's game, OK, I don't think anyone can doubt that Musa Sissoko isn't behind the manager, 100%. Um, he didn't have the greatest game, but his work rate and his effort was was there to see. I don't think anyone can say that Sonny's commitment and um, desire um, to play for the manager isn't there. Um, equally, I don't think you could call out Winks. I don't think you could call out Lamella. I don't think you can call out Harry Kane. Um, just off the top of my head, you know, from, from watching the game yesterday. Um, I don't honestly believe that Toby and Jan aren't bothered. I'm not saying that they played well or that they are at the peak of their game and at the peak of their partnership. Um, but I don't think it's because they don't want to. I don't think it's because they've got their eye on moves away from the club because I think Jan has always said that you know he's he's interested in staying and and, and to be honest with you um I think um I think Toby would stay I, I don't think he's keen to just move on for the sake of it but they want they want better deals maybe or you know and it may not even be about money it may be about length of contract and, and all that kind of stuff and we've seen this week with Sissoko getting a five year deal that maybe we are moving away from that um, 30 um, threshold. I don't know. Um, but clearly, um, the team is not playing with any kind of confidence. It's almost like they are scared to do anything um, because it leads to a mistake. It leads to a mistake, and inevitably, it's leading to a goal. I mean, 10 goals in, in two games is unbelievable. 
So after the Bayern Munich um, humiliation, there was calls um, across the board for um, we need to bring Dyer back into the team to um, to protect the back four, um, and so he was in. Um, Winks um, Winks hasn't had a good game, you know, so he was out. Um, Rose was poor. He's out. In comes Davis. Um, Aurier should never be in the team again. And so he put um, Sissoko at right back. Now, personally, I didn't think he did bad. I didn't think he did that bad at right back. It's clearly not his position, and he's clearly better going forward. Um, but in terms of what he was asked to do, I didn't think that he played that badly. Um, Lamella's have been playing really well this season. He's been in quite good form, considering the the, um, the poor form that he's had since he's been at the club from time to time. So it made sense for him for him to come in there. Um, and so when you look at the when you look at the starting lineup, it's kind of what we were all kind of asking for, or what you know a lot of fans were asking for, if not all fans. Um, and so then people were moaning about constant change, but. It's almost like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. You put these players in um, to replace players who haven't played particularly well because you're trying to, to give them an opportunity to show what they can do and stake a claim in the team. And they come in and don't do particularly well either. Um, and then it's a, oh, you keep changing the team. You've got to play your best players and, and all the rest of it. Now, last week, Dyer was the answer to everything. Today, he's pants and, you know, shouldn't be near the team. And we've now moved on to, to Lucas Moura being the, uh, being the answer. Why can't Lucas get in the game? Why can't he get in the team? I, I personally think it's because he's got options that he can use. And he's trying to find the best options that he can to get some kind of stability, to get some kind of result, to get us back on track. Um, but looking at yesterday's, yesterday's game, um, up until probably the last 10 minutes, I mean the last 10 minutes is probably what people are, are really alluding to when they're talking about players not playing for the shirt, being pedestrian, not making any effort, playing like they don't care. Because I think at, at that point, it's almost like they've got to the point where they've resigned themselves to the fact that it's over. Can't get back in this game. We we can't we can't win. We're we're you know, and that for me is about confidence. That's about confidence in their own ability. It's about confidence that they can turn their luck around. And 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 clearly that for me is what is really really lacking. You cannot take um, players um, of the quality that we've got, and there are players that are real quality players. You cannot take those players and say. They've become bad players overnight because they, they obviously haven't. But football is about um, being confident and doing the right things and, and making sure that you um, put, the, put the effort in. Um, and for the majority of that game, I felt that we were putting the effort in, but in the wrong way. It was all played, you know. In front of um, in front of Brighton, who who to be fair to them played fairly well. You know they didn't play brilliantly, but then they didn't have to. They got a, an early gift of a goal uh, with Hugo um, dropping the ball at their uh, at their striker's feet, and uh, from then on you're you're kind of chasing the game. Um, but we're playing in front of them all the time. You know, passable, passable, passable. There was no creativity um, to really stretch things you know we didn't try anything different you know we didn't we didn't pull them back and, and, and dink them over the top or you know our crossing was poor we didn't get any crosses in and it's almost like everybody's taking as safe an option as they can because they're scared of messing it up and, and making it making it go the the wrong way how do we fix it well, confidence comes from from winning. Confidence comes from achieving. Um, and I guess it's just a case of they're going to have to find a way 
to get themselves back in the back in the groove. And that's not going to be easy. You know, Watford are you know, fighting for their lives. And then we've got Liverpool who, you know, <laughs> they're at the other end of the scale, aren't they? You know, everything they do works out for them. Every chance they take seems to go in. Every bit of luck seems to go their way, um, which is basically the opposite for us. Everything we do goes wrong. Every, every bit of luck is bad, you know. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. But, but splitting the club down the middle and, and fans booing, which they have every right to, don't get me wrong. But that's not, that's, for me, that's not going to inspire anybody. If you're, if you're a performer on the stage and all the people in the audience are booing, that's not going to fill you with confidence. If all if all the people in the audience are heckling you and saying that you're crap and they, that's not going to fill you with confidence, you know. I mean, I understand why people uh, people do it and that they've got every right to, but personally, I just don't think I just don't think that's really going to help. And certainly, the um, the potch out banner that I've seen banded around um, Twitter and and Facebook again is a, is a real you know, that's, that's really not going to make things better. You know, that's going to divide things even, even more, in my opinion. And, and as I say, this is just my opinion. So, you know, you can take it or leave it. So looking at the Pochettino situation, okay... Yes, there are fans calling for, for the manager to go. And that's never a great feeling, um, seeing your fan base turn against you. Um, me personally, I'm still very much uh, pochettino in. Um, I still believe that he is uh, one of the best managers out there at the moment. Yes, I think he's lost a little bit. I think he's... Um, I think his confidence is, is taking a bit of a knock. Um, but I think he needs to get himself back to some kind of basics and follow what his heart believes. Um, you know, he said about having a, a painful rebuild. Maybe, maybe this is what he's foreseen all along. Maybe this is why um, the club are not rushing to give uh, Old Vierreld and uh, Vertonghen new contracts. Maybe this is why they were prepared to let Danny Rose go. Maybe this is why they're prepared to let Ericsson go. Because Pochettino's looked at it and he's thought to himself, you know what, this squad's style, it needs new blood. I need to um, reinvigorate them and bring some new talent through to, to try to get them playing in my, in, in my view how, how I want us to play. And so... Um, that's why I think uh, Sessegnon came in, who we haven't been able to see yet. Maybe that's why they were going for uh, Fernandez and Dybala. Um, you know, and that's why Undombele came, you know, to replace some of these, some of these players. Now, I, in my mind, um, it was always about Sanchez um, being at centre-back with either Toby or Jan to basically learn the trade to, to then bring the next player through who's going to replace whoever was whoever was going. Okay, Foyth he clearly wanted to be his right back, um, but because of the because of the confidence thing and because of uh, things going wrong, you you default to who is my uh, who who's my go to guy who who can I trust who's going to put a shift in for me and really make an effort. And Sissoko is one of those one of those faithful Pochettino players. Poch believes in him and knows that he's going to give everything. Um, maybe, maybe he's not as convinced yet about uh, KWP being that player. And maybe there's still a little bit of a, a question mark over Foyth's um, fitness. He's on the bench. Maybe he wanted to introduce him a bit later on, um, but then felt he couldn't because of the way the game was turning around. Um, so I think it's a case of Poch needs to basically look at his squad and look at his 
um, plan and say, okay, what was my plan? Is Foyth and KWP going to be my right-backs? If they are, let's get them in there. Through thick or thin, I'm going to have to go for it. They're going to have to learn, because you learn more by through um, bad times than you do through good, to be fair. Um, so maybe those guys just need to come on and they need to play. Maybe he needs to put Sanchez in and say, right, you're my guy. I'm going to have you there, um, and I'm going to partner you up with either Toby or Jan, um, depending on, on, on how they're playing and all the rest of it, until I'm ready to bring, to you're ready to then partner up with, I don't know, is it is it going to be Tatananga? Um, I don't know if I've said that right. Um, is he going to be the one to come? Because, to be fair, he's he's done pretty well when he's come. He's not played badly. Yeah, you know, you've got the injury to Sessignon, which is delaying that, but, you know, maybe that's not that far away. But if Danny Rose isn't the answer, then you've got to stick with with um, Davis, who I don't even had a particularly bad game yesterday. Um, he, he certainly didn't look like a player who wasn't playing for his manager. Um, so maybe he sticks with him until he can get um, Sessignon into the team. So then, you know, then you've got to look at, well, is Ericsson really out of form? He clearly is. He's clearly not playing with any kind of confidence. Now, Pochettino does like players to play through that bad period to um, to show their um, quality and to, and to play themselves into some sort of form. But there's only so much of that you can do when your team is so short of confidence. You know, so maybe it's a case of, you know, we're just going to have to push through. We're just going to have to keep going. And, you know, and this time we're going to play with Lo Celso when he's, when he's back from injury, or we're going to play with Delhi, or we're going to play with uh, Lamella, or we're going to play with um, Sonny, you know, or, or, um, or Lucas. You know, we've got some good options up front. And finally, I don't think you can doubt Harry Kane is, is, the, is still the, 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 the future of the club. I still think he is the main man. I still think he is the, our focal point. Um, and I just think it's a case of working out, sticking with your players that you want, that, you've, that you want to develop. Because if you, if you show faith in them, then hopefully they'll show that faith in you. You know, if you can show faith in um, KWP or you show faith in Sanchez and say, right, look, you're my guy. I want you to play in this position. You're going to be my number one guy to go to. That's going to give him some confidence and he's going to want to play for you, you know. So I, I just, I think Poch needs to perhaps go back to his plan, revisit his plan and say, right, look, this is what I need to do. I'm going to have to face it head on and just keep going. You know, it, it's not going to change. You cannot do anything until January. If you, if you got rid of the manager now, whoever came in would still only have the same players that Pochettino's got now. I personally don't think the problem is Pochettino. I don't think that Pochettino is um, causing the issue with the players. I believe that the players have an issue with confidence. Um, as soon as you go on a bad run, it's hard to get out of that. But Poch needs to make some decisions around how he manages that. Um, and some of those decisions are going to be difficult ones. But at the same time, you know... Um, He's got to, he has got to stick with it and and keep it and keep it going. So, if you bring in if you bring in a different manager, they're still going to have to play with the same players until January. So in January, if you decide right, we're going to revisit this and we're going to spend some money, surely, surely Pochettino has earned the right to take those players that he's obviously um, identified. And obviously, talking to the coaching squad, uh, the coaching uh, team, and the um, and the scouts and stuff about what he's looking for. So surely he deserves the right to have those, have some time with those players, to see where where he can take it. I've I've said this, I've said this to a couple of people, since Keith Birkinshaw, we have had seventeen different managers. And out of those 17 different managers, only three of them have won anything. Two League Cups and an FA Cup. That's it. Out of all of those managers, 
only Harry Redknapp um, and um, Terry Venables had any kind of run as manager for the for the club. Pochettino is is um, longest serving out of those uh, out of those last seventeen managers, and he has a win percentage of something like fifty odd percent, right? So surely he's earned some kind of um, credit and some kind of um, right to to keep going because the other seventeen didn't do anything for the club. They didn't win anything or give us any kind of sustained performance. We we reached the elite of football top four twice twice since um since that time and and that was with uh with Redknapp um and we all know what happened there so following Redknapp we had nothing again back to back to mediocrity under AVB and under Sherwood so from that point he's taken us to consistent top four finishes uh, and to consistent um, semi-finals and finals that in itself is a level of success it might not be our success as as supporters but in terms of um, a football club's success it's still a form of success now I'm not advocating that top four is the be all and end all but football clubs determine that that is the be-all and end-all um, and what creates the ability to be able to spend money and so on and so forth. Winning the FA Cup is not going to allow you to go out and spend £70 million on a player, you know. Um, so, you know, you've got to be able to get to that top table to be able to um, start to invest the money. And to be fair, you know, they did invest money in the summer, not as much as we perhaps want to, but... They did invest money in that in that squad. So I, I honestly don't think that changing the manager is going to make any difference at all. I, I really, really cannot abide the idea of having Jose Mourinho as Tottenham manager. The guy himself is absolutely toxic. Yeah, OK, he might be able to get the players playing initially. He may be able to get them to, to start to perform and all the rest of it. But it will all be about Jose Mourinho. It will all be Jose Mourinho. You know, if ever if anything goes goes wrong, it'll be this player or that player or, or, or whatever. You know, I, I for me, I, I just do not see that as the right way to manage people is to actually rip into them and call them out publicly and make a mockery of that player and destroy that player. I I really cannot see that he is the answer. And then we maybe go, oh, OK, well, let's get another um, up-and-coming manager. Let's, let's get Eddie Howe. Now, I love Eddie Howe. I live in Paul, so I'm not far from Bournemouth. And I love what Eddie Howe has done, uh, done to Bournemouth. And I like the way they play and everything else. But it will be a massive rebuilding project. And we will be back to square one with another five-year project to see where it gets us. And I, I honestly don't think that we can afford to do that at this stage I don't believe I believe that we've come so far that any change now will be a backward step but listen you know it's just my opinion uh, you know uh, and I'm, I'm just trying to be as um, I, I'm just trying to be as um, I, I don't know I don't know what the word is I'm trying to be not diplomatic but I'm trying to be honest and I'm trying to talk without being overly emotional um, about another defeat because it hurts, right? You guys are hurting. I know that. I'm hurting, you know. But to believe that the players aren't hurting, to believe that the po- the, the the manager ain't hurting and the coaching staff ain't hurting, I don't believe he's right. I, you know, I honestly do believe that they are feeling it and they really want to put it right, you know. But sometimes it takes time to, to get there and... In the high pressure world of, of uh, Premier League football, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be really tough. But as supporters, we have to stand together. We have to support our manager. We have to support our players and encourage them and give them confidence as much as we can, as much as we can influence, influence the game. You know, We have to be grateful for where we are and for what we've done and keep pushing forward 
and supporting the club till we until the end because that's what you're going to do not one of you people not one of you people watching this will walk away from this video and go you know what I've had it with Tottenham I've had it I've had it with them I'm going to go support someone else or I'm not going to watch football no more I'm not going to go no more I'm not going to spend no money you will not get away from it you will not get away from it this is how teams that have that get relegated still manage to keep going because of loyal supporters who will follow their club through thick and thin. Undoubtedly, there are going to be an, a load of um, fair weather fans, tourist fans, and all that kind of stuff um, around the club. You know, because when you're being quite successful, people will jump on that bandwagon. Yeah, they will, you know. Um, but ultimately, you know how loyal you are, you know how much the club means to you. Um, and so you will decide whether you are one of those people or whether you're not one of those people, you know? And if you are one of those people, and, and, that, and that's, that's entirely up to you, you don't have to support this club. Um, I just know how I feel, you know? So if this season ends in relegation, for instance, I would still renew my season ticket and I will still go to the matches, you know, because that's, that's how I feel, you know, that's my choice. Um, equally, if Pochettino does get the sack, I will still support Tottenham, I, you know, I will. Um, so, you know, whatever happens, the one thing that, that, that will be constant will be my support for the club uh, and my love for it. And uh, I just hope... Um, that we can get ourselves out of this dip um, in the short term. And I hope that we can move move on, um, see what happens in January, hopefully get some players in that are prepared to, to stand up and fight or, or to bring some confidence into the squad and, to, and some refresh. Um, but all you can do is keep the faith, guys, and, uh, and keep on supporting your team. Like I say, still potching for me. You don't have to believe that. If you think I'm talking rubbish, leave some comments below. It's entirely up to you. I, I try to reply to as many of them as I can. Sorry for the for the long for the long video today, but I felt that I had a bit to say this time. Um, but like I say, this is just me pouring my heart out. So keep the faith. Up the Spurs.